We are addicted to plastics. Now the day goes by without using them. Now we're drowning in it. And the biggest bad guy is the thin plastic bag with an average working life of 15 minutes. And by 2050, plastic will outnumber fish in the ocean. Speaking of fish, 30 to 70 percent of a fish is wasted, including fish scales, an inedible byproduct of fish with little to no value at all. People may think, once a waste, always a waste, but I see this fish scale waste as an untapped resource. Interestingly, fish scales are a dermal bone comprised of two main layers, an outer calcified layer and an inner fibrous layer, mainly collagen. They are strong, yet thin and flexible, just like plastics, but unlike plastics, it can degrade naturally. So you may be wondering, what does this fish scale have to do with plastics? Here's my thought process. If collagen is a matrix polymer in the main structural protein in animals, and type 1 collagen in fish scales has a tensile strength stronger than steel, then using the concept of structure, I can isolate the collagen fibrils and reconstitute the collagenous matrix to develop an alternate material to thin film plastics that I call cycloplasts. And this is what my project is all about. I developed this using three types of sustainable freshwater fish, nautilapia, mangrove red snapper, and giant gourami. I developed this in five main stages, preliminary, pretreatment, extraction, drying, and thermal dehydration. And I conducted three main tests, protein analysis, application testing, and environmental testing. Here's a compilation of photos from my development and testing stages. This is my setup in creating cycloplast and tensile strength testing using a digital horse gauge. Here's my protein analysis testing with Bradford assay and protein electrophoresis, and some samples ready for testing. Here's my environmental testing with lettuce seeds and hydroponics to simulate aquatic degradation, phytotoxicity, and water solubility. Here's environmental testing with lentil beans and soil to simulate terrestrial degradation, phytotoxicity, and home composting potential, and lentil beans and other mediums to demonstrate the lack of phytotoxicity. I observed 59 plants total over a period of five weeks. After nine months and hundreds of trials, my results are promising. I successfully upcycled fish scale waste with a 93% yield into a thin, translucent, plastic-like film with tensile strengths up to 53.77 newtons per millimeter squared, comparable to LDPE. Thermal dehydration boosts tensile strength up to 68% with an optimal extraction temperature at 55 degrees Celsius where the tensile strength peaked. Cycloplasts had higher shrinkage performance from 130 to 150 degrees Celsius while LDPE melted and deformed. As temperatures increase to 150 degrees Celsius, transparency decreased from 74 to 25.8%. Cycloplast degrades within five weeks in both soil and hydroponic environments with a 100% survival rate and no signs of phytotoxicity, including chlorosis, necrosis, and wilting. Plant growth varied as much as 8% less than the control in hydroponics to 4% higher in soil. The dissolved protein in hydroponics may reduce the dissolved oxygen, while microorganisms in soil and on legume root nodules benefit from amino acids in cycloplasts. Protein analysis gave me insights into the relationship between the extraction temperature and physical properties. In general, higher extraction temperatures cause higher protein concentration, as higher temperatures break down the intact collagenous matrix at a faster rate. However, higher extraction temperature also lowers molecular weight, which may lead to lower tensile strength. Interestingly, there was an anomaly with red snapper scales, with a lower concentration but still following the overall trend, possibly due to snapper having more calcium salts in its scales, requiring higher temperatures to achieve higher concentration. I made four key discoveries. Number one, I discovered that the intact collagenous matrix has the main determinant of tensile strength, and its quality was influenced by the pretreatment, extraction, and thermal dehydration conditions. Number two, thermal dehydration was proven to enhance tensile strength by removing water molecules and forming thermal bridges. My custom cooling chamber was proven to accelerate formation by accelerating the transition from disorder to order. Number three, Cycloplastic composition, almost 100% protein, is the key to its degradation, as microorganisms break it down for amino acids. And number four, I established successful parameters for real world applications, and I concluded that we can upcycle fish scale waste as an environmentally friendly alternative to thin plastics. Since one size does not fit all, Cycloplast is targeting thin film plastics that accumulate the fastest, and my prototypes, which can easily carry 15 pounds, are ready to be smarter options for reward applications. With the cost of $3 a kilogram, this is cost competitive, and think about the benefit to the environment. In fact, it has been my passion for the past four years to develop alternate materials to plastic from various wastes, inspired by my joy of taking out the garbage and the food that I eat. And I have to say, this Cycloplast shows the most promising results yet. This is exactly why cycloplast is important. It eliminates cleanup and can prevent any additional plastic pollution. And by upcycling fish scale waste, we can live our lives plastic free.